The two radiopharmaceuticals used for nuclear stress testing are thallium and technetium. Thallium was the first agent used for nuclear stress testing. It is a potassium analog that is actively transported into the myocardium by sodium potassium pumps. Technetium, on the other hand, is an isolated element and does not bind to cell receptors. In order to localize this radionuclide, it must be attached to ligands to form radio tracers. The two commercially available ligands are cestamibi and tetrophosmin. Both of these ligands diffuse through the cell membrane and localize in the mitochondria. Thallium emits a lower energy photon and has a longer half-life compared to technetium. The higher energy of technetium emitted photons means fewer photons are stopped by the body and more arrive at the gamma camera, resulting in better image quality. The shorter half-life of technetium reduces the duration that the patient is exposed to radioactivity and allows for higher doses to be administered. For the same radiation dose to the patient, approximately 10 times as much radioactivity with technetium can be injected compared with thallium. This is why thallium has largely been replaced by technetium-labeled radio traces. A potential drawback of technetium traces is their gastrointestinal excretion resulting in greater hepatic and gastrointestinal uptake. This can interfere with the myocardial wall visualization. The myocardium is divided into 17 segments. The segmental assignment is based on three short axes and one long axis slice, which represents the entire left ventricle. The anterior and septal wall are supplied by the left anterior descending artery. The lateral wall is supplied by the left circumflex artery, and the inferior wall is supplied by the right coronary artery. Each of the 17 segments is scored using a 5-point system. 0 is normal, 1, 2, 3 means mildly, moderately and severely reduced uptake, and 4 means that there is no tracer uptake visible. Perfusion defects with scores of 3 or 4 can be reported as consistent with a critical coronary artery stenosis. If there is no defect in both stress and rest images, it is normal myocardium. A defect in both rest and stress images usually indicates infarction, whereas a perfusion defect seen after stress, but not seen on rest images, indicates myocardial ischemia. Detection of coronary artery disease is one of the most common indications for performing a stress test. This referral is most appropriate in patients who have an intermediate likelihood of coronary artery disease. Because, for example, in a patient with a 50% pretest likelihood of coronary artery disease, a positive test increases the likelihood to 80%, while a negative test decreases the likelihood to 10%. The difference for this patient is therefore 70%. In contrast, for a patient with a pretest likelihood of 5%, a positive scan increases the likelihood to only 20%, while a negative scan decreases the likelihood to 1%. The probability difference is only 19%. Therefore, experts recommend using the regular exercise stress test in patients with a low pretest probability and the coronary angiography in patients with a high pretest probability. This is because a negative nuclear stress test would still result in a relatively high coronary artery disease likelihood. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up.